Hey guys, welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit, Am I the A-hole? This one's from user Telethesis. Would I be the a-hole for taking a job with my dad's biggest client, meaning he won't get any more work with them? My dad has a business that me and my brother work for. My dad wants to leave the family business entirely to my older brother. He says it makes the most sense because my older brother is his oldest child and has been in the business the longest. He has a business degree and knows much more about the business side of this work. While I do the physical aspect of the job very well, I was a bit impulsive when I was younger, so he doesn't think it would be a good idea for me to be in charge. To be honest, I don't think it would be either. But considering how much I contribute to this business, and that I am his son too, I think I should at least get some say in the future of the business and a stake in the company. Not even half, but some. In the end, my father said no, but that I would get some money after he died. The whole thing really angered me, and I was starting to get bitter continuing to work there and be around them, so I gave my two weeks notice. I've just been trying to keep a neutral demeanor the whole time. This week was my last week, and Jared, the guy that represents our biggest client, was asking if I could take care of this other project next week. So I told him I would pass that along to my brother, but that I'm not going to be working here next week. Jared and I talk a lot and are pretty friendly with each other because I'm the one that mostly works this job. We've actually hung out outside of work a few times, so he asked why I was leaving. I just said for personal reasons. He asks where I was going to be working, and I told him I wasn't sure yet because there's not a lot of businesses that need employees with my skills. Anyway, today while I'm working, Jared's boss comes down and asks me if I will consider working for them. He said he's been thinking for a while of doing all this work in-house, but has been having trouble finding someone with experience since it's such a specialized field. He said he's always been very happy with my work, and that's why they always request me. He offered me a three-year contract, and the salary is so much more than I would ever have made at my dad's company. Plus, it comes with benefits and an office. Not sure what I'll do with an office, but that seems pretty cool. I also get to pick out the equipment, and I can hire two employees to work under me. Overall, it's an amazing deal. But I know that losing this client will hit my family's business hard. At the same time, it's not like I was asking for it or trying to steal their client. He was the one that came to me and wanted me. I thought about maybe using this as a bargaining chip with my dad to get some say and stake in the company. But honestly, I don't want to get it that way and I just don't want to work with either of them anymore. Would I be the a-hole if I took the job? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Elcat says, not the a-hole unless you use this to pressure your dad. Just go and take the job. Buy More Plants says, I think putting in your two weeks notice was the final bargaining chip. If they didn't care enough to keep you then, they aren't going to care enough to keep you now. They'll just want their client back, and who knows what will happen after that. Maybe they keep their word to you, maybe not. Take this job, secure your future, but be prepared for the backlash of your family, not the a-hole. Demo Beck says, not the a-hole. Your dad was being completely unfair. You now have an awesome opportunity, go for it. I would. However, check any employment contracts you have and make sure you're doing it by the book. For example, my old contract stated I couldn't work in a competitor business until six months after I left my old place. OP responds, I'm pretty sure mine didn't have any competitor clause. It was really short, like two paragraphs long. I'll check again later though when I get back to the office. OP's edit. I really regret putting the whole bargaining chip in this post. People seem to be focusing on me doing that when I say right afterward that I don't want to and don't want to even work with them anymore. It was just a fleeting thought, guys. Edit 2. Seriously guys, not actually planning on bargaining or negotiating with my dad or brother. 
Okay, OP, you are definitely not the a-hole and should go for that job. I think that you're right, that you deserve a stake in the company. Your family, you're part of that business. You helped that business get where they are. The biggest client they have is an account that you manage because they ask for you. And just because your brother has a business degree doesn't mean he'll be the best at running the company. Unless he also is a great leader and knows about talent development, which I'm guessing he doesn't. Or else he would have recognized your value and what you contribute to the business and told your dad that you should deserve something. But he didn't. Again, I do think you should take that job, but like one commenter said, be prepared for the family backlash because it is gonna happen. But then again, that's just my opinion. So now, let's move on with the update to see what happened. So, it's been a while since my first post and things have been settled. I felt like a good amount of y'all said it was okay to take the job. There were a few that said I should give my dad and brother a heads up that this was all happening before I accepted the job so as not to blindside them. So that's what I did the day after I made my original post. The talk itself didn't go smoothly though, they got pretty angry. My dad said this was a reason why it would have been bad to give me part of the business because I'm selfish and only think of myself when he's trying to keep over a dozen people employed. My brother said I was basically betraying the family because I didn't get something that I didn't really deserve from them. I didn't exactly want to stay around them anymore after that, so I just walked out early that day and decided not to finish out the rest of the week that I was going to. Later, I called to formally accept the job. The equipment we ordered only came last week, so I was basically just being paid to stay at home and do nothing for the first few weeks. It was actually nice to have a break from everything before diving into work again. It's been pretty great at the new place though. My new workspace is a lot different, nicer, from my dad's shop. It's wide and open. It has air conditioning, assigned parking, so no more fighting for a spot on the street. The office they gave me isn't huge, but it's also nice. Like I said in my previous post, I don't have much use for an office, but it's still nice to have a private place to myself, especially one with a mini fridge. Overall, I definitely feel much more appreciated here than I ever felt working with my dad. Speaking of which, I haven't talked to my dad or brother since, and I don't think I will. I had heard from Jared that right after I had left, after talking to them about the job, they had called my new boss and tried to deter him from hiring me. I also heard from a cousin that my dad's business isn't doing so well right now and they had to let some people go and are downsizing. Some of their other clients had shut down their businesses due to the bug. So that combined with losing their big client permanently hit them hard. Anyway, there's not much more to say than that. Many of you were right in that it all likely did permanently damage my relationship with my father and brother, but I still want to say thank you to everyone who encouraged me to take the job. So before ending this story, let's take a look at a couple of comments from this update to see what they think about everything that's going on. Otter House 5 says, they're mixing up cause and effect. Business partners are responsible for looking out for the well-being of the business. Employees are responsible for doing a job in return for money. Your father and brother made a decision that you are an employee instead of a business partner. And now, they're mad at you for acting like an employee instead of a business partner. If they actually wanted you to act in the best interests of the business instead of seeking the highest pay and best working conditions for the job you are paid to do, they should have cut you in as part owner so that it would actually be one of your responsibilities. R. Lazar says, It's unfortunate that your dad and brother didn't consider the potential consequences of their decision. I'm sorry they have chosen to make all of this your fault, blaming you for looking after yourself and your own future. I wish you the best of luck in the new job and hope that your family will eventually be able to mend things. Yeah, OP, I absolutely agree with both of these posters, particularly the first one. Like I said previously, they didn't recognize the value that you bring to the company. That was their mistake. Like Order House 5 said, they should have made you a business partner because of that value. 
and then taking care of the business would have been your responsibility. That would have been the best thing for your dad's business. But he decided otherwise and now these are the consequences. So we'll leave it at that. Hopefully you can mend things with family and time, but in any case, the best to you in your new job. This one's from user throwaway 02241111. Am I the a-hole for objecting to girls day? I'm a 28 year old male and my immediate family is all women. Mostly, this is because I was raised by my mother and have no contact with my father's side of the family due to a messy divorce when I was young. My two sisters, early 30s, my three aunts, two who are my mother's sisters and one married into the family and married my aunt, and they have an assortment of close friends of the family, all of which are women that also go to these events. About three years ago, my mother had an idea to do a girls only weekend. Originally, this was to see one of the Magic Mike movies. And because it was such a hit, they started to do these weekend outings once or twice a month. Originally, it didn't bother me because I'm an adult and I have my own life and my own home and I really didn't even think about it. But an incident recently made me annoyed at the whole concept. My aunt's birthday was in January, and normally we go to her favorite restaurant for her birthday, which also incidentally is my favorite restaurant. So I bought her a present and a card and waited for an invitation, and none came. When I asked what was going on for her birthday, I was told they celebrated it early on their girl's day because she was going to be out of state during her birthday. This kind of irked me because when I mentioned I bought her a present, my mother told me to just drive over to her house and give it to her. I felt pretty left out since I'm the only male in my immediate family. Having a girl's day is the equivalent to saying, hey, let's celebrate my birthday but not invite him. I griped about it and was told that I was basically being self-centered and that she can celebrate her birthday however she wants. I agree with that, but once again, I'm the only one being left out and it feels crappy. The proverbial straw that broke the camel's back was that I was just informed that they were planning a summer vacation this year as girls only too. And when I asked my mother what about the vacation we normally take as a family, she told me that they can't afford to do both, so they are just doing the girls only vacation this year. At this point I was very annoyed and had a loud argument with my mother and sister telling them that it's really crappy that twice a month they have group activities and specifically exclude me, and on top of that are now even taking vacations and excluding me. Nothing came of the argument and they wouldn't budge, so I decided I needed a break from my immediate family because they don't consider my feelings relevant. So I removed myself from the family group chat and deactivated my Facebook. Now my phone is being blown up and I'm being told that I'm immature and I need to grow up. I responded that a lot of grown people don't see much of their family at all and I'm just going to follow that example. Am I the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Not Michelle says, not the a-hole. If you're the only male in the family, it almost seems as though they're having a day without OP and framing it as a girl's day. Not cool. Follow the Spiders says, not the a-hole. Maybe if you weren't the only male in the family, I could see their position. But like you say, it feels like you're personally being excluded. The vacation really crosses the line. It makes me wonder about your relationship with them. Have you been close prior to all of this and this girl's day thing just got out of control? Or have there been conflicts before and they are handling it immaturely? Yelling at them won't change their minds, and to be honest, I'm not sure what will. But try to be calm and responsibly explain how they are making you feel and why logically there is no need to have a girls only vacation or birthday celebrations when that just means excluding you. I'm not totally against them doing their girls days sometimes, but it doesn't seem like they are taking you into account at all. OP responds, I'm very conflict free and low maintenance as a person in general. My mother and sisters always tell me that if I get any more laid back, I'll be laying down. This argument with them was actually extremely out of character. 
My sisters and mother, on the other hand, always have drama with each other. And despite their drama, they always seem to patch it up and still do things together. I feel like the only person who isn't causing drama is me, and I'm also the only person not invited. I'm not sure if I explained it correctly, but these events happen multiple times a month. And at this point, the only time I'm ever included in celebrations and events is holidays. Also, in regards to if we are close, I feel like we're about as close as is normal. I wouldn't say I confide in my mother or sisters greatly, mostly because they are kind of gossips and if you tell one, suddenly the whole family will be discussing your issues. I don't think I've done anything to cause issues, but I'll think about it and see if I can remember anything. Orange Doormat says, You're the a-hole. Are none of these sisters or aunts married? Cause if any are, then you are not the only male excluded. You are a grown A man acting like a child. The vacation one I kind of understand being upset, but otherwise you are overreacting. OP responds, My mother is single. My aunt is single. My other aunt is a lesbian and has a wife. My sisters are single. One of them is casually dating, but not official. These are the people I am closest to. And it is literally a matter of all of my immediate family are doing something fun a couple of times a month. And due to my gender, I am excluded. How is that cool? The last time I did anything with my family together as a group was Thanksgiving. Meanwhile, I read all day in the family group chat about how fun it was to go to the zoo, how they just love that restaurant they went to last weekend, etc. According to you, I shouldn't feel left out and I'm overreacting for feeling that way? OP, you are definitely not the a-hole. I think it's great that they want to have their just girls day because that's healthy. But yeah, family birthdays, vacations and all that kind of stuff should be a family thing, not a girls only thing. And if you're the only guy in your immediate family, then yes, you are being excluded, no matter how they want to frame it. I gotta say, I think it particularly sucked that your mom refused to try to see your point of view and she just ganged up against you with your sisters. I totally understand you wanting to cut contact with them. I would. I don't care if you're blood related. If somebody makes you feel crappy and explicitly excludes you, then yeah, I wouldn't want to hang out with them either. But then again, that's just my opinion. So now let's move on to the update to see what happened next. This last month has been kind of wild for me, so I haven't had an opportunity to update this till now. So the descriptions of my family and my family situation in this thread was specific enough that one of my family members found out about it and confronted me. Due to the fact that I had deactivated my Facebook and was only receiving text messages, I didn't realize what was happening before I was ambushed by it. My sister, oldest, confronted me about it and asked if it was me who made the thread, and I confirmed that it was. And she insisted I was being crappy for airing the family's laundry like that. I responded that I in no way did that, as I was speaking very generally and never identified who my family was. This spread to my family, and now the thread was shared on Facebook, and everyone was shown. I was invited to a family meeting, we never have those where I was sat in front of a firing squad of angry women who told me that what I did was wrong and demanded an apology. They said that I knew they weren't excluding me, and because I gave everyone that impression, I owed them an apology. I replied that I absolutely did not know they were not excluding me, and included examples of things they did, such as the birthday dinner, going to an amusement park, and going to a baseball game. Once again, they characterized this as a girls only event of fun where boys just weren't allowed or welcome because they wanted to talk about things guys wouldn't be interested in. I replied that she needs to stop saying guys because there is only one guy who would have been invited and that's me. So what she's really saying is it's a no OP event, not a girls only event. They explained that it wasn't excluding me because regardless of whether I was interested in the event, the conversation would have bored me because I'm not a girl. At this point, we were going around in circles, so I just explained my perspective. I said that I'm the only male in our immediate family. When the people in my immediate family get together on a regular basis, not a one-off or once in a while, and don't include me, regardless of what they call it, I feel excluded. 
I explained that the breaking point was the family vacation and that there was absolutely no reason to leave me out of a vacation I was always invited to. Particularly when that's the only family vacation we do and they've stated they cannot afford a second one. At the end of this meeting, I was never given an apology. No one tried to empathize with my perspective and I was accused of many things that I didn't do by any reasonable interpretation. I told my mother and my sisters that we reached a breaking point in our relationship and that I was going no contact for a while. I told them I'm an adult, I have my own life and the reason I wanted to be involved was because I didn't want one of those family relationships where you only see your family at holidays. If that's not what my family wants, then it's okay. But I told them that I was not going to be involved with people who made me feel crappy and intentionally leave me on the outside looking in of my own family. My mother and sisters told me that if I was going to lie about them to everyone, that they don't care. At this point, my relationship with my family is over. I left that family meeting and have not reactivated Facebook and have not received any contact and have not initiated any contact. Que sera, sera. OP, this whole situation sucks. I am so sorry that you have that kind of a crappy family. If by any chance this video makes the eyes of any of those family members, you should all be ashamed of yourselves. You all suck. To that mother and sisters, you guys lost your son and your brother. You actually lost somebody that loved you and that gave a crap about your lives. You alienated him, excluded him, and now he wants nothing to do with you. I hope you guys are proud of yourselves. One additional point, and this is more of a personal question where I may be wrong, so I really would like somebody's input. That part where they explained that it wasn't excluding him because regardless of whether he was interested in the event, the conversation would have bored him because he's not a girl. Is that sexism? Please let me know in the comment section because I don't want to get it wrong. This one's from user SweetBabyZ2020. Am I the a-hole for not forgiving my husband, 26 male, for a mistake and not trusting him with our child? I, 24 female, gave birth to my daughter 6 months ago and it should have been the happiest moment in my life. When my daughter was born, her skin was very dark and looked like she could have two biological parents who were of African descent. My husband Jim, 26 male, fake name, was furious and accused me of cheating and left right then and there. He told everyone on both sides of the family what happened, made a post on social media and wanted a divorce. His family and a lot of our friends all called to say how upset they were at me and called me really nasty names. My mother was by my side the entire time and I kept professing my innocence. Jim refused to pick me up from the hospital threw my stuff out on the lawn and changed the locks, so I had to stay with my parents. When my sister called to ask for the baby stuff, Jim texted me pictures of the bare nursery room and said he got rid of everything. He even destroyed my art studio. I like to paint and the art I made and told me my work would be too awful to sell. I was distraught and tried to focus on my baby. Weeks went by and Jim refused to speak to me directly and has never once asked about our child. Eventually, he agreed to do a paternity test and he was 100% the father. No one could believe the results and it was done again. Jim's the dad. Around that same time, one of Jim's cousins did the ancestry thing and there was around 30% of African ancestry in the family. This, combined with the test, made Jim's paternal great-grandmother admit to having an affair around the time Jim's grandfather was born. And because he could pass, she just assumed her husband was the father. Since then, Jim has been reaching out and everyone has come to apologize. And while it did feel good to feel vindicated, the damage has been done. I can't unhear or unsee all the horrible things that was said and done. Not just to me, but to my child as well. Jim made some very racist remarks, things that I thought he'd never say, and he did it so easily. Regardless of what our daughter looks like, I don't want her to be around that. What else will Jim and his family say or do the next time they get mad? How are they going to treat our daughter when she does something that upsets them? Jim has been begging for forgiveness. I said I need time. 
He asked to see the baby, and I let him, but I'm too afraid to physically hand her to him. He's repairing the nursery and keeps asking me what I would like, and I cry every time saying we already had what I liked and some of the items that we had can't be replaced. He asked me if I still loved him, and I admitted that he showed me his worst self, and I don't know if I could live with that image. I didn't mean to be hurtful, but it's how I feel. My sister suggested couples therapy, but I don't feel like I should have to work to fix something that I didn't break. I've never cheated and have been 100% innocent in all of this the whole time. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to give Jim a second chance? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Deleted says not the a-hole. He showed his true colors and burned every bridge he could. Ended and never looked back. Starblaze647 says not the a-hole. He trashed you. He got his entire family and friends to trash you. He threw you out onto the street and destroyed your stuff. You just had a baby. And he threw you out instantly over an assumption. He does not need forgiveness, he needs therapy and divorce papers. Then after divorce, only give him weekends or visiting hours. As much as I want this kid to have a loving father, this is not a man I'd trust ever coming into my damn house, let alone see my hypothetical kid. He skipped straight to rage, didn't even listen to you, and neither did the rest of his damned family it sounds like. My blood is boiling, as I'm sure you can tell. Flowers in my hair 923 says, not the a-hole at all, don't go back. OP's edit, I stepped away for a few hours and couldn't believe what I came back to. I am truly amazed by all the wonderful comments of support as well as the private messages. I also understand why some people may think this is fake and all I can say is that you are free to believe what you want in this. I also see some questions and I think I should clarify a few things just in case your judgment may change. 1. All of this initially happened at the near February and I was already settled at my parents' house before the lockdown hit. 2. One of the reasons Jim wouldn't pick me up from the hospital was because I wouldn't admit to cheating or giving him any details, because there weren't any which made him angrier. 3. Based on the pictures Jim sent me, he didn't take a sledgehammer to the crib or anything, he just took stuff down to either return it for the money or give it away. While deeply hurtful, I wouldn't call it violent, but maybe it is. 4. Online he announced that I pushed out a dark-skinned baby and he was going to divorce me. His family started with the racial comments and eventually he started doing it too, but only through my family. He refused to speak to me directly. 5. Once the truth came out, everything he and his family posts were all taken down, but I and a few friends still have the screenshots. Jim never wrote down his racial remarks. 6. While he didn't say any of the racist words, he did make comments about our daughter being a welfare princess and how I was going to be just another baby mama. 7. Just to clarify, Jim is white and I am at least half white. One of my parents is adopted and with everything that's happened, they decided to do the ancestry thing too and we should be getting the results any day now. Yeah, this is a quick and easy thing to judge. You are not the a-hole OP. Your husband or future ex may I say, he is the a-hole here and everybody else who made comments without any kind of proof and just jumping to an assumption. Granted, you could kind of try to understand your husband's mentality and what he was going through when all of this happened, but jumping into rage right away and leaving you in the hospital at that time that's not right. Instead of leaving and making a Facebook post, the first thing your future ex should have said is, I want a paternity test now. That's it. But of course, that's just my opinion. So now let's move on to the update to see what happened after this. Thank you all for your words of encouragement a couple months back, both in posts and the DMs. A lot of things have happened since my initial post and I just needed time to process it and be in a place where I can write about on social media. So here it goes. First, my parent who was adopted did the Ancestry 23 thing and it turns out that Jim wasn't the only one who had African ancestry. My parent had at least 45%, which means I have at least 20%. I am legally separated from my husband with primary custody 
and I'm living with my parents until further notice. He still keeps apologizing and wants me to come back to the house. He even offered to leave so I could stay with our daughter, but I don't want to and really like having the support of my parents. My dad is retired and he does a lot of the babysitting while my mother and I work remotely. I do go to the house every so often so Jim can see his daughter and for couples counseling via telecom. In one of the sessions, Jim confessed something really hurtful and some of you guessed right. He cheated. It was while we were dating before he proposed and his treatment towards me was a projection. It was with an ex-girlfriend who had cheated on him and he hooked up with her as an ego boost. He started to feel guilty but was too scared that I would walk away to ever confess. Jim also admitted that he was scared when I got pregnant. Our baby wasn't planned, was very anxious about being a father, but just pretended to be excited because he didn't want to look like an a-hole. My husband was so willing to believe that our daughter wasn't his because he thought he had an out. Now that he knows that our child is his and has spent time with her, Jim regrets everything and just wants his family back and is willing to spend the rest of his life making it up to us. This was all deeply hurtful and I've cried about it more than once. Jim has been lying to me and my ability to trust him hasn't improved at all. When the holidays came around, Jim's parents asked about seeing their grandchild and I didn't want to. They told me that it was selfish of me to keep her away and I reminded them of their past. They said that they've already apologized and tried to minimize the situation. They said that I can't be angry forever and that I need to learn to forgive them. I'm so ashamed of ever loving and marrying into this family and wonder why I didn't see this before. I've decided to contact a lawyer and will be filing for divorce after my daughter's first birthday. Oh Jimbo, apart from being a hothead, you cheated too? Dude, you just keep getting worse by the minute, don't you? OP, it's a good thing that you have your parents' support. Hopefully, they will also help you through the divorce proceedings. And hopefully, Jim will get his head screwed on straight and be a proper father when he gets the chance to do it. Apart from that, I hope you and your daughter have an awesome 2021. Take care, OP. This one's from user. Tell me more, please. Zero one. Am I the a-hole for back-talking my cultural influence's mother-in-law? My husband and I met in college 12 years ago. He is from out of country and was in a visa that permitted him to use our college resources, but nothing more. After four months of dating him, I helped him get a more permanent visa and within four years, he proposed. Our relationship is utterly fantastic. Not to sound biased here, but holy f in hell is he the best man I have ever met in my life. Despite me being infatuated and deeply in love with my husband, his mother never approved. She expected her son to divorce me, return to Ecuador, and marry a woman who had been promised his hand in marriage. Obviously, he refused and made many attempts to get her here for a visit and see how wonderful I am. She finally agreed last summer after three years of attempts. He was insanely nervous. Upon her arrival, she refused to get in our car, stating that it was a waste and insisted on public transportation. My husband rode with her and weirdly enough, his father rode with me. His father is flipping fantastic as well, super easygoing, absolutely hilarious and a real charmer. So we arrive back home and his mother is nitpicking our house. She says it's too big, too wide, the kitchen is too small, the decor is tasteless, etc. We move on to dinner. She refuses to eat because we made pork roast and it goes against her culture apparently, yet her husband scoffed it down and asked for thirds. She starts criticizing me for having wine with dinner, stating that alcohol is the work of the devil. It was quite ridiculous, but still, I said nothing. The breaking point? My 47 pound ball of fluff golden retriever comes barreling into the room with my brother who had taken him for the day. Mother-in-law goes completely insane. Dogs are the work of the devil, who would have known? She whips out her white sage from her purse and proceeds to smudge my house. My dog is following her at this point and she reaches down and smacks my dog on his tail and while screaming about how my dog is attacking her. 
She then gets in my husband's face and starts berating him for following the devil's lifestyle and tells him that he either divorces me immediately or she would disown him and cut him from her life indefinitely. I lost it a bit. I stood up and said, get out, get the F out, wait on the porch for your cab, I will arrange a hotel room for you, but you will not be welcomed here beyond this point this evening. She looked flabbergasted and then starts berating my husband again for not defending her. My poor husband is standing there like a deer in headlights watching this all unfold before calmly saying, No mom, she's right, you're acting foolish and I think it'd be best that you take leave. He then apologized to his father who said, I think dinner was lovely, and then turned to me and said, I apologize for our intrusion. I feel like the biggest effing a-hole right now. Husband has been silent, obviously distraught, his father has called again and apologized, but his mom refuses to speak to her son. Am I the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Patterson2384 says, not the a-hole. That outburst is the number one sign of an abusive, narcissistic mother-in-law. Your husband should go to therapy ASAP, as an individual, and you both together, to ensure you are both on the same page for your future. Ron Effin Swanson says, Father-in-law's reaction to all of this speaks volumes. Everyone knows mother-in-law is a dramatic turd, even her husband. He wasn't offended you kicked them out. Why? Because this probably isn't the first time they have been kicked out because of her actions. Your husband stood by your side because he knows his mother and knows how she is. Not the a-hole. Pinky Pineapple says, Not the a-hole. Ecuador, you say? Not eating a pork roast? Pork is our national food. The lady is cuckoo bananas and she is not worth so much drama. Good for standing up for yourself. Also, I would like to say that she is talking BS. Is your fiancé so special to have his hand promised in matrimony? Nobody does that anymore. Not the mestizos and not the indigenous people. Vieja loca. I agree with this last commenter. That is a crazy old lady. Not sure your husband needs to go to therapy if he can stand up to his mom already. But, you know, that's up to you guys. In any case, your mother-in-law is bad-ass crazy. Just make sure your husband isn't affected and move on. She's not worth it. Let's move on to the next post. This one's from user Free Deals, why not? Am I the a-hole for taking all the free food that comes with the meals that aren't mine? There is a restaurant near my workplace which I have a membership of. They featured apps for members that, as part of promotion, recently allows one to spin the wheel once per day for coupons for a variety of free dishes per set meal. My colleagues wanted to eat from that restaurant today and, as usual, I became the delivery person and walked there with a list of meal orders from six individuals. After checking that I also have six coupons in my account, I decided to redeem all of them at once. I got myself two drinks, one dessert and three side dishes from the six set meal orders by my colleagues. They are in small portion and six of them are just enough for a nice free lunch. As I returned to the office with the food, one colleague asked me about the free food and I told him that I redeemed them with my account, so those are all mine. He protested that I should not take free food from their orders as I didn't buy a thing and that food should be shared instead. I insisted on keeping them as I haven't got myself anything and I would have gone hungry. My colleagues have been giving me weird looks for the rest of the day, but none of them said anything else. Am I the a-hole? Yeah, sure, those are only free with purchases, but they wouldn't have got them anyway had I not redeemed them. However, it is also true that I kind of leached off a meal for free. The judgment is, you're the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. And a short edit from OP. Webby Fanderquack says, you're the a-hole. Technically, anything free with purchase is for the people who pay for the food, and it does make you look cheap to not pay for any food for yourself and just keep all the freebies. My fickle mind says, so, everyone is paying for their own meals, but you use your membership to get the rewards for meals you didn't pay for? They basically bought a free meal for you. That's not right. You're the a-hole. SARK says, not the a-hole. If I go grab lunch for everyone and pay with my credit card that gets cash back, I'm not splitting that with everyone. 
I would say, soft, you're the a-hole. You didn't pay for anything. It was their money. You shouldn't have used your account to buy their food with their money. If that would have resulted in no free food, then that's the result. No free food. You should pay for your own food. An argument could be made that because you did the food run that you'd be entitled to that, but you could have easily said, I'm not doing the food run. Or stated beforehand that you would do the redeeming and then you would get all the benefits. But now let's take a look at the edit. I see that many are asking why I did not tell them in the first place. Well, I wasn't hiding from them or what it was just a last minute decision when I realized that I had so many coupons. I thought that since they wouldn't have got it if they were present anyway, I could conveniently save money out of the coupons. Yeah, wasn't thinking too deeply and that might just be a dumb decision and thank you guys for explaining to me. Let's move on to the next post. This one's from user Morstour. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my disabled neighbor to park in my driveway and getting her car towed, despite the previous owner allowing it? I bought a house a few months ago and moved in last month. The previous owner was a friendly old man that could no longer live alone, so he decided to sell and move in with his daughter. Just to be clear, I put disabled in quotation marks because the lady in question is just really, really overweight and I am not sure if that counts as disabled. Now, apparently, he had been allowing use of his driveway to his disabled neighbor lady largely because street parking is extremely limited and what little street parking there is, is pretty much instantly occupied. What I am saying is, unless you have a driveway, you end up having to park a good 5 minute walk away and that's the best case scenario. Obviously, I was unaware of this, so I was surprised to see a large SUV parked in my driveway when I moved in. I ended up having to knock on several doors asking whose car it was because the movers could not stand still on the busy road too long. I figured out it was the neighbor's car, so after a good 10 minutes of knocking, an extremely angry, enormous lady opened the door. I told her to move the car and she immediately started arguing that the neighbor said it was fine. I told her he moved out, I moved in, and no, it is not fine and to move it because the movers need to unload my stuff. She begrudgingly did. I ended up seeing her walking back half an hour later completely wet with sweat. Now, a few days later, I went back to work and lo and behold, the SUV is parked in my driveway again. I go over there again, spend 20 minutes knocking on the door before this lady opens the door again visibly angry. I tell her to move her car. My driveway is not public parking. She protests saying her ankles can't take walking the distance and claims I can easily walk. I tell her that while that might be true, it's my goddamn driveway and I want to park there myself. Again, she moves her car. Again, I spot her half an hour later drenched in sweat making her way home. Well, it happened again a week ago and this time she would not open her door. I got tired of it and had her SUV towed. She of course came to my house to scream at me. I told her to get the hell off my property. A few days later, I had a small fence installed with a lock on it to make sure it did not happen again. I have since been getting dirty looks from her and one other neighbor and when I told my mom, she told me I should be nicer to people. I do feel sort of bad too. She clearly struggles with the walk after all. Am I the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Puppies for Prez 2021 says not the a-hole. Plain and simple, she should get a handicapped spot designated for her if it really is that much of an issue. OP responds, I'm not sure how that works, but I honestly doubt her situation would entitle her to that. TL Minnow B says, not the a-hole. You bought a house with a driveway, it's yours. If she's truly disabled, she can contact the city to have them designate a handicapped parking spot. If she had handicap tags, she can use that. Otherwise, she's trespassing. Northern Lit Up says, not the a-hole. This is your house and your driveway. You asked her several times nicely, but she ignored you. Her situation is not your fault and not your problem to solve. I absolutely agree. It's your house, it's your driveway. Her condition or weight is not your problem. And yeah, you could be nicer if she was nice as well, but she isn't. She just tried to take advantage of you and then screamed at you trying to play victim. No, 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 not the a-hole. 
Let's move on to the next post. This one's from user throwawayvaca5. Am I the a-hole for refusing to take my fiancé's parents on a vacation with us? I, male 27, recently sold my apartment and put the money along with the money I've been saving up to buy a house on my own before my fiancé and I get married. I have an architecture degree, but unfortunately I haven't been able to find a job within the area I live in. Things have been rough. I finally was given the opportunity to work for a private company that is literally making my life more difficult. It's not really what I wanted, but a decent way to make money. My fiancé is currently living with her parents and we agreed to move together after I purchase a house. Thing is, I just can't keep up with my fiancé's constant demands. She also tries to get her parents involved in everything we do since they live together, so she thinks she can include them. When I sold my car, she asked if I was going to invite her and her parents to eat out at a nice restaurant. She even asked if I could help her dad financially when he was having issues with money. She refuses to discuss wedding planning without going back to her mom for the smallest details. It's annoying, but I don't want to look like I was being mean or anything, so I just let her. She insisted that we go on a weekend vacation when I sold the apartment. I agreed and told her I'd book for us too at the resort and spend the weekend there. She was so excited. Last night, she called me to ask if I can include her parents since they spent the whole year without going anywhere. I was honestly taken aback because I've already pulled out enough money from my account for this vacation and I just can't afford to pay for her parents' stay. Besides, this vacation was supposed to be for the both of us. She said she felt sorry for her parents and that she already told them about it. I got so mad at her and asked her why she did that. Like she already decided but was just calling to let me know that I'll be paying for her parents' stay. I told her she either apologized to them or the vacation will be cancelled. She got upset, tried to get me to change my mind and then told me that I am the one who needs to apologize to her parents. She yelled at me and we haven't talked since that argument. She's demanding that I go to her parents house to talk to them, probably as an attempt to get them to get me to say yes but I told her I had no business going to her parents since she was the one who decided to invite them without telling me. Am I the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Silly Sarah SG1 says, not the a-hole. I think you should be reconsidering this whole relationship. Besides her constantly involving her parents, which probably won't stop, she seems to treat you like an ATM. Every time you sell something, she's ready to spend that money for you. If you two are getting married, why do you have to buy the house first? Why isn't she contributing to the down payment on the house she will be living in? Why is she asking you to help her parents financially when you had a hard time finding a job in your field for a while? Is she concerned at all that the job you were able to find is making your life more difficult? Have you two talked about moving somewhere with better opportunities for you? It doesn't sound like she cares about you. It sounds like she's using you to finance her and her parents' lives. Cool Tomato 5868 says... Quotes. She asked if I was going to invite her and her parents to eat out at a nice restaurant. Refuses to discuss wedding planning without going back to her mom for the smallest details. She already told them about it. Told me that I'm the one who needs to apologize to her parents. She's demanding that I go to her parents' house to talk to them. End quotes. I think you need to see your own words compiled for you. Is this the life you want? Is this the dynamic you really want to sign up for? No, of course you're not the a-hole here, but holy hell you will be if you see all these red flags and still decide to marry into this family. Yeah, you're not the a-hole and your fiancé or girlfriend or whatever she is needs a reality check. Like I've said before, I don't usually jump on the leave them bandwagon, but in this case I would really take a hard look at the relationship and the family dynamic before going through with the wedding. This one's from user Purple Flavored Cherry. Am I the a-hole for refusing to buy food for anyone in my household anymore? Everyone eats my food. If there are leftovers or takeout, my dad and sister will pick it off until there's just a little left for me. If I buy food and keep it in the fridge until mealtime, they'll ask each other if they can eat it. For example, I had a sandwich. 
I ate half of it and literally announced, I'm going to save this for dinner when I get back home. Everyone acknowledges what I said. So I come home, it's gone. I ask where it is. My ma said that my sister ate it. I ask her why she ate it. She said our ma told her she could. So I would go back and ask our ma why she told my sister she could have it and she says, oh, I didn't think you wanted it. So I start leaving notes on my food. Then it's, oops, sorry OP, I didn't see the note. Or, well, I was just so hungry, but there's something else in the fridge. It's not that our parents don't buy groceries either, but I work so much that by the time I can sit down and enjoy food, most of it is gone. It doesn't matter who bought the groceries. It's the same way even when I buy them. So now I'm refusing to pay for anyone's food, ever. I'm just so frustrated. I literally cried a little bit because I'm so tired of all the food being eaten. I'm so hungry, think I have tasty food at home and it's gone. All I've been eating lately are bologna sandwiches and 99 cent instant ramen. Of course, everyone in my family thinks I'm being petty and immature. My sister is upset because she gets like $30 a week from her job. She's 15 and I get paid almost 10 times that. I don't think I'm being immature. This is the only way I can think of getting my point across. That all said, I would be lying if I said I didn't feel a tiny bit guilty. Am I the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Alyssa2579 says, not the a-hole. You should buy yourself a mini fridge to keep in your room. Empty Flounder says, not the a-hole. You haven't said how old you are, but can you afford to move out, buy yourself a fridge and put it in your room with a lock on it? Your family are being the petty immature ones and quite honestly have no respect for you. Seriously, buy yourself what we call bar fridges in Australia. See if you can get a lock for it and put it in your room. That way at least your food etc won't go missing. OP responds, I'm 21. That is something I am very seriously considering to buy. I guess I was just wondering if I was being equally immature or petty. Electronic Dealer 71 says, Not the a-hole. I feel so bad for you right now. No one should have to be in this situation in which they can't even come home and enjoy food that they bought for themselves with their own money. If this was the occasional thing, that would be fine. However, this is recurring, so your reaction is expected. Although you are not the a-hole, be prepared for some backlash from your parents and sister. This might happen, and if you prepare for it now, it's probably better. Then, again, most likely nothing will happen, so you are fine. Have a nice day, OP, and I hope you can eat your own food later. OP responds, Oh, my sister is already really annoyed about it, because she's trying to save up for some full body mirror or whatever, and my dad thinks I'm being childish about it. My ma feels bad that she forgets about it being my food, but it happens very frequently. OP's edit. Thank you sincerely to everyone who took the time to respond. As annoyed and frustrated as I was, I was also worried that I was being silly, immature and overreacting. I will look into getting a small fridge to keep food in my room. Again, thank you. Edit 2. Please stop suggesting that I spike my food or poison my family. Final edit. Thank you to everyone who left messages and ideas on how to proceed with this. I don't think I can have a small refrigerator, but I do intend on getting a lockbox for the fridge and finding a hiding spot in my room for non-perishable snacks and such. It's embarrassing it has come to that, but I think you guys are right. Your comments have made me realize that I have much deeper problems at hand than my family eating my food. My dad and sister have entitlement issues, and my mother is an enabler by being so passive about it. I'm going to think of ways I can stand up for myself effectively. Thank you all for taking the time to leave support and advice. Even though you didn't have to, it really does mean a lot to me. Yeah, OP, I think you're absolutely right with your last edit. Your family is the one with the issue here, particularly your dad and your sister. Your mom is just, like you say, passive about it. So yeah, you're definitely not the a-hole. So, let's continue with the update to see how OP handled this situation. Hello there! 
Since so many people were gracious enough to leave advice on how to handle this, I decided I'd give you guys an update. So, I decided I wasn't going to get a mini fridge for my room, but I did get a little cage for the family fridge to keep my leftovers in. My mom thinks it's ridiculous, but accepts it. My dad, surprisingly to be honest, thought it was hilarious. And it made my sister really annoyed, because she thought I was overreacting. As for everything else, I went to Target and got a storage box to keep my snacks in and put it in a safe spot in my room. Many people's comments made me realize that my issue at hand was far bigger than my family eating my food. So, at dinner, I talked to everyone at once about how I felt towards their food thievery. My ma was immediately regretful and I do believe that she feels bad. She offered to immediately replace the food that was eaten, but I said it was okay. I don't want compensation, I just wanted to stop. My dad, I'm not sure if he feels bad, but I did remind him that out of the two of them, I'm the only one that actually leaves the house and works on their feet. They work from home. So I think that I'm entitled to having my own food without worrying about it going anywhere. He seemed to have gotten the message. My sister didn't take it well. I'll spare the details, but it was a long and loud rant about how she doesn't eat that much of my food and I was starting to annoy her. I don't eat as much quantity-wise as the rest of my family does. Apparently, her logic was that since I'm not currently eating it, it should be okay for her to eat it instead. My ma tried to help me explain my feelings to her, but she started yelling louder and stormed away. Her attitude is a different can of worms for another day. In the end, I am very confident that that situation has been worked out. I'm glad that I was able to successfully communicate to my parents about how I feel and that I now have a system put in place where I can actually eat the food I buy without having to worry about someone else taking it. Thank you again to everyone who left advice and pointed out what the real problem actually was. Well OP, this is great, problem solved, so no more food troubles. The only thing I would add is, like you say, your sister's attitude is a very big problem and she needs an attitude adjustment or is going to have problems at life. The main issue here is I feel she has zero tolerance to frustration. Nobody's ever said no to her apparently and she is a spoiled brat. I would dare to say that your sister has zero tolerance to frustration and that's due to parenting. Apparently nobody told her no when she was little and has never told her no so she just get what she wants and feels entitled to other people's things like your food. It's a good thing that you bought that lockbox because that sets a boundary she cannot break. She apparently has no regard for other people's boundaries but I would think that when anybody crosses one of her boundaries then she just rises up a crap storm. In any case, you solved your problem and your sister's attitude is your parents' problem. So congratulations OP and I hope you get to now enjoy your food. And that's it for this video. If you'd like, here are other videos from my channel that you would enjoy. Now don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.